Yeah, the renovator for this house installed these aluminum soffit fascia pieces. They did cut three round holes in this spot here. However, when I was working in the attic, I didn't feel much of any current of air, and you don't usually on a soffit like this. However, I thought I would enlarge the soffit area, or openings that is, and um, removed two of the panels of the soffit so I can cut a square hole and put a regular vent on here. Um, this attic had suffered from a lack of uh, sufficient air movement. Uh, we put a ridge vent on the roof, which I'll show you in a minute, but I now want to increase the movement between the soffit and the ridge of the roof. Uh, this takes some effort. You have to bend back the edge of the fascia very carefully using a straight edge so you don't uh, kink it. And then pulling out the nails isn't really that tough because some of them are not set hard on the soffit material. But anyway, I intend to do this one. Since I found the round holes, I'm going to assume that there's more of them and uh, a great concern for installing uh, further vents on this side may not be necessary. Uh, this is a 1960 house and at that time they did not um, involve themselves in doing a lot of soffit ventilation. Um, this is pretty much a closed soffit. Here you can see the ridge vent that was installed uh, last September. This is a year later the ridge vent has uh, dramatically uh, cleared out the attic um, and like I said now we just want to increase the airflow up through the rafters and uh, substrate or the uh, decking of the roof which has suffered in the past from some mold uh, which was um, sprayed out and then painted uh, sprayed with peroxide that is anyhow I'm going to proceed to cut this hole when I get the proper uh, vent uh, at the store Okay, I have now cut that hole for the soffit vent that I wanted to install to increase the airflow in this attic using that heavy saw, which I've had. Not easy. It'd be nicer to have a smaller saw, but I'm not going to purchase one for this job. Um, by the way, I used a wood ladder, and this saw is plugged into a GFI outlet. That's the only way I would do it. <clears throat> Yeah, sawing upside down is not fun. You definitely want to cut only to the depth of the plywood because they put these supports up here to form this box soffit and you don't want to cut those. Uh, not to mention any other mysterious things that might be inside this cavity. Anyway, the contractor had already cut these holes, but what I found when I went through in here and felt around, these holes were blocked by insulation anyway. So now you can see right up into the edge of the rafter tails. And you can see the baffle that comes down from the attic and also the insulation. Now the insulation that you see is the original insulation in the house. They did add uh, fiberglass bat insulation which I had to cut back a little bit to make sure these were open up here uh, beyond sight actually. But this is uh, step two of getting this job done. I also bought the covers. This is the cover that I will fit over this opening. I cut the opening just a little bit smaller so that I could get the screws in here to fasten this on here. Like so. And um, since this is a vented soffit, meaning the aluminum panels, the air will still circulate up through this vent opening. So I'm going to finish this part of the job now by fastening this cover on here. Well, this is after I've reinstalled the soffit panels, which were two, and I have to still bend up the fascia board piece which I consider to be probably the toughest because I don't want to kink it. Uh, there's minimal damage to the soffit from this work. 
and it took it took some effort to get these panels back up in here which I didn't show you but there's only one of me and I can't hold the camera and work at the same time yeah and I'm gonna use this 2x4 which I just randomly got from my supply of stuff to help do this because you want to bend this metal uniformly across its length if you can otherwise you're going to end up bending it where you don't want to bend it uh, this should be a help and then you can use some thumb action to finalize what you're doing this is the finished uh, job for installing that soffit vent underneath this aluminum there's slight damage to the trim here but uh, you'd have to be looking at it real carefully to see it the fascia is slightly uh, bent outward but you really have to look hard to see it um, I've got it really back in place it looks really good uh, this is not an easy task you're gonna get scratched up but I actually just got very small scratches because I'm kind of used to working with this stuff after so many years but anyway this is the job as it's finished at this point um, I know it's going to be a major help in um, venting the attic once again I'm working on the front of the house now to cut another ventilation hole for the attic soffit vent uh, this area here doesn't have any vents at all I don't believe the renovation person cut any holes either <coughs> fortunately the soffit material they installed does have vent holes at least there which will make this work we're also um, in a good location there's a baffle right up there going up to the main attic this is kind of an inside soffit here it's like a double soffit I'm not sure if that picture is really good but um, I went up to check also to make sure that there wouldn't be any insulation problems with the house but we're in a good spot and there's a big draw of air here so I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover on this spot as well now this is the finished work on this soffit vent it's underneath a solid panels but it will also get air from over here for which there's a one inch clearance so this is what the finished job now looks like Plus the um, the area above that soffit runs more than 12 feet across on both sides and connects with the upper roof. 